as insurgents make gains in Iraq. Today, the White House scoffed at critics who say American military forces would make a difference in the fight for Fallujah. There was sectarian conflict, violent sectarian conflict in Iraq when there were 150,000 U.S. troops on the ground there. Uh, so the idea that uh, this would not be happening if there were 10,000 troops in Iraq, uh, I think, bears scrutiny. Critics like John McCain blame a failure by President Obama to reach a deal with the Iraqis on leaving a counter-terror force behind. In a statement, McCain says, many of us predicted that the vacuum would be filled by America's enemies and would emerge as a threat to U.S. national security interests. Sadly, that reality is now clearer than ever. That brought a strong response from the White House. If members were suggesting that there should be American troops fighting and dying in Fallujah today, uh, they should say so. The last American combat troops left Iraq in 2010. 4,486 Americans died in the Iraq War. A recent poll asked, was removing Saddam Hussein worth the cost of American life? Only 36 percent said it was. 49 percent said no. Secretary of State John Kerry made it clear on Sunday no American troops will be sent back in. This is a fight that belongs to the Iraqis. That is exactly what the president and the world decided some time ago when we left Iraq. So we are not obviously contemplating returning. We're not contemplating putting boots on the ground. The U.S. is speeding up arms shipments to the Iraqi government, including 58 surveillance drones and 100 Hellfire missiles. The Pentagon says they're an effective tool in wiping out rebel safe havens in western Iraq. The situation in Iraq could have implications for Afghanistan, where President Hamid Karzai is playing hardball and talks to allow a U.S. counterinsurgency force to stay after American combat troops depart that country at the end of this year. If the United States and the international community leave Afghanistan, the Taliban have a very good chance of coming back to power. If they come back to power, President Karzai's entire legacy, legacy in Afghanistan, not to mention his own personal security and that of his family, are all at risk. Is that really uh, you know, a, a danger that he's prepared to tolerate? Is that really a risk he's prepared to run?